Hello, everyone. I'm Keith Casebolt. Welcome in to Simply Life, the radio program created by my dear friend who's sitting across from me, Gary C. Johnson. Isn't it wonderful to be alive? Oh. Oh, my goodness. And you know, the sunshine makes you feel that way, doesn't it? Oh, my. wonderful sunshine. We've had some. A beautiful Sunday. Beautiful yeah. Memorial Day. Yes, indeed. Uh, it. It just, I suspect it gets better, but I'm not sure how. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, when that sun pops out, it just makes everything want to live and grow. Well, I want to shout out to Joy Newcomb. Oh, okay. Down at Food City, uh, working hard, helping me check out, getting my stuff bagged for me. Right. And... Uh, he came outside and talked to me for just a minute. And, Joy, I really appreciate you doing that. And he was talking about what it means to the folks like him when people show honest appreciation for what they're doing. And he said, actually, hundreds of people have come through. Really? And he said, I... Just hope all of them are doing it from their heart, but not just because they heard you say do it on the radio. <laughs> no, <laughs> but, uh, I think our friends are doing it from their heart. I do, too. And if anything, this pandemic, Gary, I think has taught all of us how much we should appreciate anybody that's doing anything for us in our lives. But, you know, I, it's like after they bag my things and things, I said by normal which is always thank you so much for being here and uh, you're actually risking your lives so that i can have these groceries and uh, i was and, and he followed me outside and wanted to talk to me about it for a minute so joey newcomb thank you for doing that thanking you thank you for coming out and talking to me uh and thank you and all the other folks at food city for what you're doing uh, and I say that truly from the bottom of my heart because we would be in a world of hurt if folks like you weren't out there. You know, I, I'm you, I'm glad you brought this up because we know what our nurses and our doctors are doing, our firefighters, mm -hmm. our policemen. But, Gary, if there's probably anybody that's overlooked, it's the service industry. That's right. And those are the people with this economy – we just found out, oh, my goodness, what would we do without them? I don't know if we could do without them and have a country. That's the bottom line. Not, no, I So agree my you. humble appreciation to you folks, I'll say it again. Thank you for being there. Hey, look, here's another example of what I'm talking about. Garbage in the city runs on Mondays and Thursdays, right? Correct. <clears throat> so I'm dragging my garbage can out Sunday. And Nita looks at me and said, Why are you dra dragging your garbage can out? Tomorrow's a holiday. So nobody's going to be picking up garbage on a holiday. Monday was a holiday. Right. I said, My friends who pick my garbage up will work on Memorial Day, and I'll bet you they will. So I carry my garbage. I take it out there and put it beside the road. And Anita says that morning, she says, let's go walking. Because before it gets hot, I said, okay. And as we're walking around the hill, here comes my garbage truck. Yeah. Now those guys were out there working on Memorial Day. So that people like me and you and everybody that may be listening, so that we could have our garbage picked up. And I want to say again, if any of you guys are listening, thank you from the bottom of my heart for vindicating me <laughs> because well, Anita didn't believe it was going to happen, but I did. You're right, and I'll add one more to it. A couple of weeks ago when we had the storms, the power went off at 1030 at night. It's pouring the rain. The call was made, and within 30 minutes— here comes the guys from the power company with their trucks, mm -hmm. with their slickers on because it's pouring the rain, it's pitch dark, and they're out there working on those lines in order for you to get your power back. 
These are people that were probably in the bed or had just laid down, and all of a sudden, just like that, a call comes in, and they're there trying to fix the problem. So I guess the ultimate point I'm trying to make, my friends, is how important each and every one is and how important the jobs are that these folks are doing. Mm -hmm. And that we truly, truly need to appreciate it. Gary, I mean, it's just... Isn't it sad that we don't truly get that appreciation until it's taken away from us, until we lose the services or the people, and then all of a sudden... Well, you take it for granted. You realize exactly how important that was? We take it for granted when we flip that switch that the power will come up. Or you can make a call and someone will come out to your house. That's right. An ambulance then we can worker. sit here and do this program and it'll actually be on the air. We take it for granted. Absolutely. One. Not anymore, though. <laughs> Just like our friends who talked with Joey, mm -hmm. we're going to encourage everyone to say thank you, thank you for the job you do, and I really appreciate it. And again, Joey Newcomb, thank you for coming out and talking to me. I really appreciate it. Okay? Well, you know, it's twofold. Our friends are saying thank you, but I bet you Joey's doing such a great job that people were compelled to say thank you. Uh, I, you ever watch how fast they can bag that stuff? And who knows where, what goes where? I tried to help the other day, and bless the young lady's heart. She said, you know, you're, you're putting the wrong <laughs> items with the wrong items. I said, I am so sorry, honey. I said, I'm not sure what goes where. I was going to try to help. She said, well, I just don't want you to break anything. Or, you know, get anything in the wrong bag. So she helped me out. But it was obvious when I tried to do it, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> it's not that simple, my friend. It would be if we knew what we were doing. We, well, everything's simple if you know what you're doing. Yeah. Remember the four agreements? Oh, yeah. Yeah, do I remember that? <laughs> <laughs> that we've talked about so many times on the program. Uh, never assume anything. All those slats. Uh huh. Do your best. Don't yeah. take anything personal. Be impeccable with the work. And be impeccable with the work. <clears throat> now, why would they talk about in the four agreements being impeccable with the word and the dangerous words hold? And how many times have we? And I said on this program that if you want the best self-help book you'll ever find, go read Proverbs. Right. Okay. It is so amazing. The little studio where you and I do this program from, there's probably two dozen books on the shelf here. Dale Carnegie, Think and Grow Rich, uh, all kinds of really good motivational books. And you pointed out to me one day, you said, Keith, everything that's up there, Earl Nightingale, whoever it is, everything that they have is from Proverbs. If you take Proverbs, you've got every self-help book in the world. It's the truth. Now I'm gonna And you're right. I'm gonna prove it to you. We're gonna talk about being impeccable with the word, right? It's hard. Now what to does do. Proverbs have to say about being impeccable with the word? Because I was in a different book, right? Mm -hmm. Than Proverbs. Okay, we'll start off with number one. Words can poison and destroy a young man's entire life. Proverbs seven. Any man who controls his mouth is literally protecting his own life. This is what Proverbs has to say. <laughs> he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. Proverbs 13.3. Wow. Uh, <laughs> he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. Proverbs 13.3. <laughs> This is a little bit more dangerous than just being impeccable with the In other words, word. if you talk too much, you're going to get in trouble. Yeah. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Proverbs 15, 1. Wow. Here's another proverb. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Proverbs 15, 2. <laughs> now, Zach, where did he get impeccable with the words? Yeah, come where, from? where did he come up with that agreement at? And then he talks about 
A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, Proverbs 15.4. The purpose of words is to educate, enthuse, and enlarge those around you. Now, what does Proverbs say about that? The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, Proverbs 15.7. Now, here's a good one. A man hath joy by the answers of his mouth, and a word spoken is due season. How good is it? Proverbs 15.23. Here's another one. How cautious we have to be with our words. He hath knowledge, spareth his words. Proverbs 17.27. Now, what is, that's that old saying goes with, if you stay quiet, people may think you're a fool. If you open your mouth, they'll know it for a fact. Oh, my goodness. That's one of the best ones ever. You, you actually said that the other day on the television program, Keith. If you're quiet, people may think you might be a fool. But if you talk enough, you sure can prove them right. Now here's a good one from Proverbs 18.7. A fool's mouth is his destruction and his lips are the snare of his soul. Now, here's another one from Proverbs 18.8. The words of a tall bear are, are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. And what they're talking about there is how hurtful words can be. To and, the point, from what you're reading, they can ruin your life, ruin your career, cost you your life, do damage that can never be repaired, and all we're talking about are words. That's right. And, you know, you go to Proverbs and you say, okay, what does it say about speaking? Okay. The heart of the righteous studies to answer. Proverbs fifteen twenty eight. In other words... Think before you open your mouth in Proverbs. The greatest, the greatest, uh, I think, one lesson you've tried to teach us is the 24-hour rule. Think Mm -hmm. before you react and speak. (laughs) Here's another one about what the tongue in your mouth can do to you right in Proverbs. Proverbs 21, 23. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. (laughs) Isn't that the truth? I mean, how many times would we have liked to have taken back words? In fact, in today's media savvy thing, how many times do we hear, oh, my words were taken out of context? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it... When you've heard the old saying about there are some people you just can't talk to, you just right. can't reason with, right? Yeah. Now, here's what Proverbs has to say about that. Right? Proverbs 23, 9. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. <laughs> in other words, why are you wasting wisdom on someone who is a fool and not going to pay attention to you. Yeah. At one time or another, we've heard just about every one of these in the self-help books, haven't we? One way or the other, just paraphrase different. Sure. You know, said in a different way. It's, see, my point is I'm trying to prove that all that stuff has already been written for us if we just have sense enough to read it. And yet... There's been book after book after book written in self-help that people don't realize it all came from Proverbs. You know, he talks about wisdom in Proverbs 2. That's Proverbs 16.23. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. (laughs) That's a nice way of saying be impeccable with the word, isn't it? Gary, everything that you're reading us, you're basically telling us we cannot afford in this life to not be impeccable with the word. Uh, Well, you know how many times have I said that 
you've got to be positive. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got to say nice things. Well, what does Proverbs have to say about that? Well, here it is, Proverbs sixteen twenty four. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Simply All right there. Right, right for you. Now here's, and really, in the words you're using, what does it say about, uh, in Proverbs, about what your words you're using say about you? Well, Proverbs figured it out. Mm-hmm. An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and his li- in his lips it is as a burning fire. You can read the heart of any person by listening to the words they are speaking about others. Ouch. <laughs> Criticizing, condemning, and complaining, right? So, in other words, whenever you're being critical of anyone and you're doing this uh, in public or mixed company or whatever, you're basically telling everyone around you what is in your soul, who you are. Proverbs, it's right out of Proverbs sixteen twenty seven. No wonder it doesn't pay to criticize, condemn, or complain. And it talks about how dangerous words are and spreading evil in Uh Proverbs. And that you can find it in Proverbs 16.30. Moving his lips, he bringeth evil to pass. The power of words. Right. And that's why from Proverbs in the Bible. Uh Mm-hmm. We should strive to the best of our ability to be impeccable with the Word. So, now let's go back to the start of this program. When you started off talking about our friend Joey, and that he came out to talk to you, to tell you that people had stopped by and and given him sincere appreciation. And that it was, and he hoped that it was truly from their heart, Mm -hmm. because it uplifted them. And, And what a difference that made. Here someone is trying to do a job to the best of their ability and working. So why would anyone ever be critical? Why would anyone ever be short-tempered or say anything to an individual that would be negative? It, it, It makes no sense. It does no good. Well, the criticizing in Dale Carnegie never criticize, condemn, or complain. You can find it in Proverbs. Mm-hmm. Be impeccable with the word in the book, The Four Agreements. You can find it in Proverbs. Everything out there that we need to live by, the way we should live, you will find in the Bible. So I guess you're saying instead of going out and spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on self help books, you can probably open the drawer and pick up the family Bible, read Proverbs, and you're going to get all the self-help you need. If you'll pay attention to it. <laughs> and, and heed what it says. And heed what it says. And uh, it is absolutely imperative that you watch the words you use. They are so harmful. They hurt to the bottom of the soul when they're criticism. And there is no pain worse than mental pain. You can break somebody's arm and it not nearly cause them the mental anguish that words can cause. An insult or a slight. Yeah. Yeah. Deliberate. Mean meanness. And if you want to know about a person, watch the words they're using when they talk about other people. Then you can get a as proverb says, it'll shine a light right into their own heart. And you'll get to see it. Isn't it also powerful to to say that you can control those lips and those words? You know, one of the things you read about was think before you speak. 24-hour rule. Isn't that a great question? I mean, if, if you look at what you're going to say and say, how is this going to impact someone? 
is this going to do good? Is it going to make them feel better about themselves? Is it going to make me look good or bad in what I say? If you go through all these questions, you're probably not going to say a whole lot. Well, if you're the right level of mean, you will never use the 24-hour rule. Oh. <laughs> that, and listen, here's something we haven't talked about. We're talking about words. How more impactful is it today because we use the text, we use the email, that those words are put into print? It's one thing to say them. But once it's in print and the person can go back and read what you wrote or what you emailed, it seems like that even stings worse. If I could ever give my friends that are listening to this any really good advice, Mm -hmm. it would be this. Be extremely careful about what you post on Facebook. Be extremely careful what you tweet, you know, tweet on Twitter. Twitter. And Instagram. Yeah. Or just your phone texting. Because you may change your mind later. The wrong person that may read it and take it wrong. And had you kept your mouth shut, (laughs) you would not have to worry about whether or not that was going to come back on you. How many people have been arrested because of stupid stuff they put on Facebook? Uh, film themselves doing the crime? Yeah. And post it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, my friends, I, I say this again. Please be careful what you post on Facebook. You know, I. You may want to run for public office someday. You may want to go to a job interview where that the very things you're posting on Facebook are things that the person that's interviewing you absolutely hates. Then they look at your Facebook. You may want to have a friend go eat at Applebee's with you, and you're not going to have any friends if you post a lot of stuff. So please, if if ever anyone on this listening to this program takes my advice, it's that. That that's the most important advice you will ever get. And you'll be so thankful if you don't react and do something stupid on Facebook. You know, my wife had showed me a post that uh, an individual had posted with a political view and said, anyone that doesn't believe like I am is basically stupid. Well, all the people who didn't believe like this individual came back on and told them how stupid they were, and it was a big war until this individual said, well, if you guys are going to be mean like that, I'm not going to post anything else. And I thought, this individual needs to listen to Gary's show about never enter into an argument. All they did was fight back and forth. Both parties said mean things, and everybody went away with hurt feelings, and nothing was accomplished. Remember my rule, never fight a principal battle. You could be wrong. Because you could be wrong. Now, neither side in that argument probably was 100% correct. There's no doubt. So why should there have been an argument? Why should people be made to feel bad? We serve no purpose. You you bring out the great point. If someone doesn't agree with you or me, they probably know something we don't know. Well, it'd be I, something uh, good to ask. Hey, if somebody you? doesn't agree with me, I'm not going to say a word about it because they may be right. <laughs> they could be right. I don't have any big ego to think that I know it all or end all. But I do know this. I can say, be careful what you post. That I can be sure of. Yes. You're at, that's the thing that you can't take back. Once it's out there. Or text. Or you text it, you can't take it back. Emails. You know, what people put in emails would just absolutely makes me cringe. Mm-hmm. And lawyers will want to fight with each other over email, and I keep telling my attorneys, don't do that. Yeah. Voicemail. Be nice. Why would you ever leave a condemning voicemail on anyone's phone for them to listen to to you? I'll tell you why you would. 
he didn't listen to the 24 hour rope. He didn't listen to the, listen, the greatest thing. Uh, I was in a parking lot and a young man couldn't have been over 23 or 24. And he came up to me and he said, you tell that Gary Johnson, that 24 hour rule works. He said, I have tried it and it works. You will never respond 24 hours later like you would have at that moment. If there's any emotion at all involved in the response. 100%. Uh, if any of our friends have just tuned in and you've never tried this, whatever comes up, it's Gary's rule, whatever comes up that has an emotional response to it, tell yourself and the person, I'll get back to you in 24 hours. Write down what your response would have been at that time, wait 24 hours, and then see what your response is. It will be complete. Completely different. A hundred percent of the time. And it will be better. <laughs> it'll keep it you will, out of trouble. It'll keep you out of trouble. It'll keep you out of everything because you won't make that statement. So, folks, as we're living this dash and we're trying to be happy. Yes. And each and every one of you, I hope, now understands how critically important you are because nothing would happen without all of us. The world, Period. the world does not go around, my friend. As you said, if the garbage doesn't get picked up, the power doesn't get put back on, the groceries don't get delivered, we come to a standstill. And we are in a world of hurt. Yes. So again, thank you, folks. Thank you for doing what you're doing. That's all I've got to say. All right. And thanks to all of our friends uh, who are... And a special thanks to those guys that picked my garbage up on Memorial Day. Indeed. Every, thank you. Thank you, guys. Everybody in the service industry. You can catch Gary's television show Tuesday night, 7 p.m. on WYMT, your CBS affiliate. The Late Night Replay is on your CBS affiliate in Central Kentucky and Lexington. And if you're an early riser, you can catch us on the Fox affiliate, 6.30 a.m. on Monday morning and 6.30 a.m. on Friday morning. We'll get your week started and also get your weekend started. If you need to get in touch with Gary, that's Gary C. Johnson. Dot com. Thank you, friend, for being here, and thank you for the lesson that you've give, given us today. On behalf of Gary C. Johnson, I'm Keith Casebolt. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, Gary and I look forward to seeing you again next week right here at this same time.